Hello everyone and welcome to another Hot Topics in Astronomy. So one of the questions I sometimes get at the beginning of the year in the planetarium is I would have a parent or a grandparent bring a telescope that they got their kids or their grandkids and ask a series of questions on how do you operate it. And sometimes I walk them through the steps on some of the basics, but sometimes they would ask pointed questions that even I wouldn't know on the spot and would sometimes have to look up that information. In fact, if you are a person that's looking to possibly give a gift of a telescope to somebody, I recommend checking out this link over here on some suggestions of what would be good to start off with in terms of looking for a telescope. Nonetheless, allow me to introduce to you some tips and tricks that I have found that helped me learn about different types of telescopes, how to operate them, and how you can learn to operate your own telescope. Now, you may be thinking, oh, this is a how-to video. She's going to pull out a telescope. Actually, no. And the reason being is because I may be able to show you how my telescope works, but it may not be practical for your telescope. So let's go over some of the practical tips that go for all telescopes. Step one, review the manual. I know that is probably the last thing you want to hear right now, but every telescope is different. And I do mean that. My telescope is a schmidt cassegrain telescope. And from the model that I have to some of the newer models that are coming out, they vary tremendously. I've been thinking about purchasing a newer model for that my particular telescope. And as I was reviewing the manuals online, I realized that there are several more steps that I will have to do in order to be able to operate that telescope compared to the one that I have. Like one of the new features that are in some of the new models of the telescopes that I have, it comes with GPS, which means you have to align the GPS and you have to have internet connection versus my older telescope, which you didn't need to have. So it would require a lot more steps that, than I originally have. So again, Follow the manual online, follow the manual, and you can even find them online. So if you don't want to have to carry like a big book and or some several sheets of paper and when you're trying to read it in the dark, you can pull it up on your phone because many manuals are found online. So if you literally Google search or in your browser search for your particular model of telescope and type manual at the end of it, they'll probably come up with a huge database of several different websites that post the manuals for your particular telescope. I know for Celestron, Mead, and Orion, those particular companies are very faithful in, in producing manuals online available for everybody. And also it's just good to have a manual on hand so that way you can look for particular parts and things of that nature. And Get to know your telescope. You may come across some terminology you may never heard of, so this gives you an opportunity to learn some of that terminology, as well as to know the different parts of your telescope. Also, ch check to see if the companies offer instructional videos. I know what helped me a lot was looking up the model of my particular telescope and going to the company that I bought it from, I have a Mead telescope. So I literally went to Mead's website and they had a list of instructional videos on my particular telescope and how to operate it and how to do some maintenance on it. So that it was incredibly useful. And of course, YouTube. You'd be surprised at what you can learn on YouTube. So if there's a particular type of telescope that you have that you're learning how to use a particular model, look up your telescope specifically. And you know, you never know, maybe YouTube has somebody that has that particular model of telescope and they show you how to operate with it. Now, I understand that some people sometimes get secondhand telescopes, like they get it from a friend or a grandparent and it's handed down, or you buy it from a secondhand retailer. So you can still get the manual if it is a market item and you can still look through the instruction manual. But most importantly, step two, make sure you have everything. I know for a lot of hand-me-downs, sometimes it comes with, you, you have a few parts that are missing and or you do officially purchase it and then sometimes the manufacturer forgets one little part. 
And so if you did purchase it from a manufacturer and there's that one little part that you're missing, be sure to have look in the manual to find the number to call to get that particular part. And if you make a got it from a secondhand person, like it was a hand-me-down and or you bought it off like eBay or something, make a list of missing parts that should have gone with the kit and or things that you will need if you need to purchase them and or request from the company, hey, I missed, I don't have part X. Also take note of things that you are going to need that don't come with your telescope that you are going to have to have in order to be able to operate your telescope. So what do I mean by that? Um, everybody has different preferences, but I know like for one thing, I, you'll probably definitely need if you have a telescope that has a tracking system on it, you're gonna need a power out source. You need a power source, which means power cords, uh, an outlet, maybe an external battery of some kind. If you're going out way into the wilderness, me means of being able to power your telescope. So that's something to me, maybe you have to look into to possibly purchase. Um, I know one particular item that I've seen professional astronomers and amateur astronomers sometimes has a knee pad because they're having to get down on their knees to look at objects that are high in the sky. And I know for me, my knees have taken a few hits here and there. So having a knee pad to put get down on my knees to be able to look at objects higher up in the sky is tremendously useful, things of that nature. Look at things that you would possibly need in order to be able to use your telescope comfortably for you. Step three, does your telescope have a warranty? Now, sometimes telescopes, when you purchase them, yeah, it comes with a warranty, but you have to register it. So don't assume that, oh, I bought this telescope, it automatically comes with a warranty. The first thing the company might ask you, did you register your item? And if you didn't register it, they say, well, sorry, your warranty is void. And I've seen so many people have gotten hit by that. So once you first look through the manual to see if you have a warranty and if you have to register your warranty. And once you do have that warranty or that certification that says, hey, you are covered from time X to time Y, keep it in a place where you know can access it just in case something goes awry. I, I've seen so many people get burned by that and I don't want you to get burned by it as well. So if you have, if your telescope does come with a warranty, make sure A, you register it, B, you keep it on hand just in case. Next step, maintenance. Every telescope over the course of its usage will require some basic maintenance. You don't want to basically run this telescope to the ground and then basically get destroyed to only have to purchase a new one. Many telescopes that when you purchase them are expensive pieces of equipment, so you have to take good care of them. So look through the manual. What does the manual recommend in terms of a timeline? Like after how many uses or after how many months will you have to do this kind of maintenance? Um, also, should something break or go missing, visit the company's websites for parts and suggestions. Like if something goes awry, sometimes the webs, um, the company can give you a list of options like to troubleshoot on your own rather than to call them or have to send in your telescope. And especially if something does go awry where they're like, yeah, that does like a, sound like a big problem, you may have to send in your telescope. Or they may send you to a person who is a, their vendor that knows how to repair telescopes. Also consider getting a lens cleaning equipment. Do not use Windex. Please, if anything there is, if you're ever gonna do on your lenses, do not use Windex. Telescopes have this protective multi-coat on their lenses to protect them, A, from the elements, to B, to help with refraction and scratching and everything. If you use Windex, the ammonia in Windex destroys that coating. Do not use Windex. Instead, use things that are used for like um, eyeglasses, things that are used for, especially like, for example, camera lenses. I recommend like, say, go to a place that sells camera equipment and get a cleaning kit from there because many camera lenses have the same type of coating as telescopes. So if you get one from that kind of place, chances are it's a good thing to use. 
I know I have, I purchased this kind of kit myself and I love the retractable brush because I would sometimes go off into the desert and I would pick up some dust on my lenses. So I just simply either use the power blower to bro blow off some of the big chunks and then just use the retractable brush to gently brush away the excess uh, dust and the cleaning cloth, especially use a cleaning cloth meant for lenses. So that way you don't accidentally put like fibers and stuff on your um, telescope or your lenses. And that way it can help clean off. And you also want a cleaning solution that's good on the lenses because sometimes you're gonna accidentally put fingerprints and eyelash might get into it. Some types of liquids might get on it. So just gently clean it, make sure you, you have the tools necessary to clean your telescope as well as adjust your telescope. Because I know sometimes telescope, every different type of telescope has like the different screws that you'll need to adjust. Um, I can't count to you the number of times I've had to adjust some fine screws and then I drop the screw and it's a tiny little screw. Good luck trying to find it. So hence why on the previous point, yeah, keep the list of parts that you may need on hand because you're gonna lose, maybe accidentally lose a piece or a piece might break. As well as telescopes need to be adjusted over time. So you're gonna have to adjust the alignment and everything. So to see if you need like any particular tools to realign the telescope. Like one of the pieces of equipment I have for realigning a telescope is a culminating eyepiece, which shines a laser down my telescope and that if it comes out the other side fuzzy, that means I mean to have to adjust the optics. And before you adjust the optics of your telescope, go to the manufacturer's website, what they recommend on how to adjust your optics and things of that nature. Next up, storage. Are you traveling with it? Are you going out into the middle of the wilderness? Are you keeping it home? Those are the two questions you have to ask because the box that usually many telescopes come with is good, but over time, that box will deteriorate. Over time, it will start to wear and tear. So you want to have a good means of storing your telescope in a proper place to where it doesn't get banged, it's not uh, exposed to the elements, it, it doesn't have to deal with a lot of water or anything of that nature. So if you're keeping it indoors, like one of my friends has a son that she got him a telescope and he just keeps it in his bedroom and looks out his window with it. So for him, since he's keeping it in his bedroom the entire time and not taking it out, all he needs is just a simple dust cover. And don't use a blanket because blankets come with cotton fibers and lint balls and things of that nature that can get in your telescope. Find a nice plastic sheet, kind of like a tarp thing um, and you could probably find a few online for your particular telescope to cover your telescope. If you are taking it out and about, if you're taking it to parks, if you're taking it out into the middle of the wilderness, I recommend a hard case. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the box will work, but after so many trips out into the wilderness, the box is going to get beat up. Whereas in a good hard case, won't. As you can see in this, tele uh, this image right here, this is a good solid wood case and it was stored in an attic. And as you can tell, the attic over time did a number on the storage. So make sure you store it in a, in a dry room temperature area because this particular attic was exposed to the high temperatures and low temperatures over time. It was constantly covered in dust. So make sure you store it in a nice place. And I often sometimes use Pelican cases as great substitutes if you cannot find a particular hard case for your telescope. Now, sometimes companies have hard cases if you wanna purchase their particular hard case, but I've noticed like Pelican cases or some rolling hard cases or, or work great as hard substitutes. Um, I know for my schmidt Cassegrain telescope, I had to upgrade it from a box to a Pelican case because the box ripped and that was just because it was an old box mm -hmm. i kept it in an old box for several years and then it finally ripped so i upgraded it to a pelican case and i have yet to regret it because it's easy to to store things in i'm able to roll with it and so if i go out and about it's easy to carry so 
think of what you will be where you'll be storing it and what type of cover slash case you will need to store your telescope. Next step, accessories. And so you have your basic telescope. You bet usually many telescope kits only come with some of the basics. They don't, as I mentioned in the previous point, they don't come with the maintenance equipment. They don't come with other different fun accessories like eyepieces, filters, maybe even adapters. So look into things that would work best for your telescope. Like one of the fun adapters I just recently acquired is this little cell phone adapter. So it allows me to be able to stick my cell phone right in here and put this piece right here on the eyepiece lens and I can take a picture with my cell phone. Now keep in mind that particular type of get adapter has a bit of weight to it. So if you have a smaller telescope, keep in mind you're adding something heavy at the end of your telescope. So find out if your telescope can handle it. So if you have a particular name brand of a telescope, look for the particular name brand eyepieces and filters. So that way you are guaranteed that it works with your telescope. And also be sure to take the measurements of your telescope as well. Um, look at the optics. Most telescopes are usually 1.25 inches. Some telescopes are two inches. So look for eyepieces and filters that fit within your telescope viewfinder. Next step, star mass. So you have all the accessories, you have all the equipment, you are ready to go. Now what? So where do you look? Well, a good place to first start is checking out the moon and some of the different planets. And sometimes I find the best way to view is just take your telescope and point, go wandering. And I find sometimes that the, go, the wandering allows people to find some unique objects. But if you're looking for a particular object, if you are looking for different ways of finding different things, I recommend Sky and Telescope has st star maps that you can uh, print out from online. There's other different places that have different star maps that you can purchase. You can also look up programs on your computer to look up different things. I use the program Stellarium because it's a free planetarium program you can download onto your laptop. Plus it has a red eye mode. So sometimes I can bring my laptop out into my backyard, put the red eye view on while looking at my laptop to say, okay, according to this map right over here, I could see this object and it allows me to be able to go back to my telescope and look for it. Also, cell phone apps. Some cell phone apps allow you to be able to connect with your telescope to where you can do the go-to method, as well as some cell phone maps allow you to be able to find different objects in the sky. So these are just a few tips and tricks. And of course, with all that in mind, happy sky watching. So these are some of the basic information, tips and tricks that I can give you guys to help you get started with learning how to use your telescope. If you have any questions or comments, leave it down in the comments below. If there's some veteran telescope users that have some other tips and tricks, leave it down in the comments because I know some people would love to hear from your knowledge as well. And with that, stay safe, stay healthy, as always, never stop learning.